All right. Uh, before we get going too far, um, may as well do some quick introductions. That way everyone can kind of get to know each other. Um, this is my first time talking with uh, both Butter and Coding. Uh, so welcome. I am Sean. I am your Game Master. Uh, I have been running Pathfinder for uh, eight months now. Uh, I have been enjoying it. Uh, before that, I ran 5th edition. Uh, I got started in 2020 when COVID started. Uh, I had been introduced previously by my brother in 2016 with a one-shot, and I really liked it. Read all the rules, didn't get to play for the next four years. Uh, so... <laughs> um, when uh, he tried to run another one shot in 2020, I was like, I am not letting this opportunity go. I am actually going to play. And so I started running games because I could not find groups. <laughs> uh, that has led me to here. Um, as for how I met everybody here, um, I posted online and that is how i met every single one of you actually aaron and baines uh i was looking for some players for a one shot i think and uh aaron had posted and i said sure why don't you and your uh boyfriend join uh, and that that's how i got to meet aaron and baines so uh but uh julian and mike were both online applications um and so yeah, everybody here has started off as strangers. Um, Aaron and Baines, I have met in person since then, so I would say we're a little more than strangers at this point. <laughs> um, but that is where I come from. Um, you're always welcome to send me messages on Discord asking questions. I'm happy to answer. Um, if for some reason... Oh, well, I guess I'll talk about rule stuff and questions later. So, uh, in that case, let's go ahead and go down the list. Um, I'll go ahead and go start with Aaron. We'll go down alphabetically in Discord. <coughs> Hello there. Uh, Aaron, uh, yeah, I met Sean. I was stalking Sean since 2016. Kidding. Um, but yeah, I was looking for... for a new group of players because my previous group kind of got to the space where it was kind of toxic and it sucked so it's like let's find something new and uh stumbled upon mr sean here in his one shot um he killed us all um i think he's done that a couple times now yeah yeah the early days were a lot of tbks but <laughs> they were also pre-made adventures fun. so <laughs> it was also fun um so yeah um uh, I'm I'm 40, so I've been playing tabletop since like first edition D and D. I'm old, I know. Um, I'm usually DMing. I was really grateful to meet Sean because I got an opportunity to play, and then give him opportunities to play as well. Um, we kind of trade off now. Uh, I am playing Ko Ushner. Uh, goes by Ko for short. He's just a redneck hillbilly half orc that. Uh, is able to channel the elements of earth and fire. He uh, likes to tank for folks if they let him. Um, and yeah, it's a long and short. Also available for questions if you guys need him. All right, uh, Baines. Uh, hello there. My name is Baines, kind of like that guy from Batman, but just multiple. Um, I've been Role playing uh, like half my life, but that was like D and D. Had some really terrible DMs who just wanted to be like, "Oh, I'm gonna exert my authority over you. You need to run with my uh, my idea of what the campaign's gonna be." Uh, got into Pathfinder, played games with Sean. Um, I did host one of my own, so I could answer some questions, but I'm probably not the person you want to go to. And I am playing OMG Maryblood. Um, he is a cleric, uh, and he will do good by whatever means necessary, and whatever he believes is good is the good he's going to do. All right, um, Butter, you're next on here. 
Uh, alrighty, so I'm I'm like 22, you know, I'm a university student, but I've been playing um, Pathfinder 2E for a long time. Um, it feels like now. Um, I got into it a, a little bit before COVID and just been playing since then. Uh, I played D&D &D, 5E before that, started in 2016, but you know, I've been um, role-playing for a lot longer than that. I've been role-playing in just whatever I could get my hands on since I was about... Uh, I, got, I guess I was nine when I first lied about my age to get into a role-play environment. Um, <laughs> That's hot. That's so hot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I've I've been playing for a long time. I've DM'd my own Pathfinder uh, 2E campaigns and... I, I, I feel like I'm a much better player than I am DM just because I'm, I'm I'm a lot more reactive than I am proactive a lot of the times. But yeah, I mean, I uh, joined in this campaign after I had a, uh, me and the GM of my last campaign just kind of moved apart, personality rise. And that was that. It was just a clean break. So here I am. All right, and then we got Cody. Yeah, let's see here. I'm uh, 35. I'm a dad. I got two kids. Um, Ditto. I, oh, yeah, a lot of fun. So uh, I'll try to be very clear if I've got a sick kid or something preventing me from making it. But uh, I have been playing, let's see, 5E since I guess about four years now, um, right before the pandemic got into it, playing in person. Uh, up here in Seattle, and then um, pandemic hit, moved online, and have been online since then. Uh, for the past three years, have played a game weekly on Monday and Wednesdays, slash GMing every Wednesday, basically. Um, not a lot of play time, though. Decided to do this alternating Wednesday thing here. Play one, you know, play one Wednesday, GM the other with my friends. Um, I am playing Owen Weaver, uh, who is a gnome bard uh, with a banjo, um, seeking adventure, seeking uh, just stories to share with children to fill their fill their minds with, uh, you know, the, the tales of heroes. Um, not not exactly a stellar uh, physical specimen, but definitely down to help out with anything non uh, strength related. <laughs> and that's me. All right, and then we got Julian. Uh, hi, I'm Julian. Um, been playing for. Like a little over ten years, um, got into Pathfinder. Pathfinder First Edition was my first RPG. Um, actually, the the bookstore manager um, of when I first went to college was like he was showing like showing me what books I needed for which classes, and he was like, "Oh, uh, you heard of D and D?" It's like, "Oh, there's this new game, Pathfinder, that just came out." So that's actually how I got started playing. Um, uh, I'm playing, uh, sorry, I'm, I, I'm just totally for space for a second. <laughs> no worries. I'm, I'm playing Nathan. Um, I actually f forgot that I have a familiar, I just have never mentioned it before. <laughs> what? That is the life of a wizard, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do have a familiar, that's right, because, um... <laughs> Uh, my I'm, my character's name is Nathan, and my familiar is Emmerich, which is like an inversion of a previous character I played where my character was Emmerich and my familiar <laughs> was Nathan. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, um, right, I sorry, what this clicked into my head for a second. Uh, I'm a ratfolk wizard. Um, he originally had, like, kind of nature-ish ties and ties to, like, nature but that's sort of kind of faded away as he's 
spent more time, more and more time in civilization. Kind of more like a like a, a hobbyist rather than like a living the life sort of thing. And not great at magic yet. He's getting there. And he died. And I died. Yeah, that's right. He did die I died in like one round. Yeah, the... <laughs> You went in, and then the goblin was next to you, and then there was darkness, and they just attacked you all three times because they couldn't see to verify yeah, that you were like dead. I got. Yeah, I got like crit, and then I got stabbed again, yeah. and then I was dead. It was bad. And that's me. All right, and then we got Mike. That's actually why we got to go help out these druids later, because uh, they did a solid, you know, yep. undeathing me. <laughs> <laughs> and undying someone is a little bit different in the world. Um, so. Alright, Mike. Uh, I guess I'm last. Everyone can hear me, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And well. Uh, cool. And thanks for clarifying. I'm never sore. Right. Uh, <laughs> so my name's uh, Mike Hell. Call me Mike. Anything in Mike adjacent is fine. Uh, if we're giving out numbers, I'm 35 now. I've been playing 5v4 for, I want to say about five years at this point in time. I spend more time. Like, I'm not even a player anymore. I just like DM all the time and I run a regular group. And, and that's all well and good. But I'm also a martial simp that feels like, you know, <laughs> the system has, like, some things it could improve upon. Pathfinder has all these interesting ideas. I was doing all this feet homebrew, and I was like, okay, maybe I should just play the freaking game. Uh, Found Sean sound, sounded very intriguing, and I've been having a good time thus far playing as Azen. He's a monk, strength-based, uh, very punch-oriented. The general idea was... That he works for kind of like a monastery made up of Laura Croft types and they're like oh these dangerous magical artifacts which are very exciting all belong in a museum so he's the type that just goes out to you know jump over the spike pits and such to retrieve these things but right now we're all caught up in you know human trafficking and zombie druids yeah so uh, kind of leading into that um, well, let's, let's leave the exciting stuff for last, actually. <laughs> Otherwise, I am going to, uh, forget about going over some quick house rule stuff, just making sure everybody's on page with each other, um, and then we'll just be playing <laughs> and not ever cover that. Um, but really... Murder, you know, murder is an unjustified killing. He's killing bad. That's... He's killing. <laughs> no unjustified mm -hmm. killings. Oh... Oh. They're helping them find <laughs> new employment with the realms of the dead. <laughs> um, character creation stuff you guys have already gone through. Uh, not going to worry about that. Uh, the only real homebrew rule we have, really, is uh, natural 20. Uh, no matter what you roll it for, grants you a hero point. Uh, That's really interesting because it's, it was the opposite way in my life. Oh, really? Where you roll nat 1, you get a hero point? Yeah, later. <laughs> but I like that one, too. Yeah. Um, I picked this up because of some of the um, uh, one D&D &D, uh, uh, test stuff. Uh, play test stuff. So. Um, nice. Let's see here. I never did get a chance to look over um, Valen and Owen. Uh, but we are playing with uh, Ancestry Paragon. Uh, looks like you guys both have that, so that's good. Um, oh, nope. Yeah. Oh, I gotta fill that out? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that disappeared, so... If everybody would check that. Well, um, I don't know if it's for anyone else. Does the character sheets and everything just have, like, long dot, like, names and stuff? No. No. Like my name is types .item .ancestry. Do I need to refresh maybe? 
guessing, yeah. It sounds like a CSS error. Would you take a screenshot of it for me? Oh, sorry, I'm already reloading. Yeah, I figured you already had. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you guys ever come across something like that, take a picture of it for me. That way I can see, because sometimes a refresh won't do it, and then I can... Well, I guess if a refresh doesn't work, then I can still... Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, we're playing with the free archetype. You guys are level two at this point. So you guys do have that. Um, I see both of you have an archetype in there, which is perfect. Um, and then gradual ability boosts. Uh, so I'm going to pop to the front, make sure we guys, all right. So, uh, if for Owen, if you would assign a um, attribute boost modifier and there we go awesome ah. we were supposed to have dinner with my mom tonight and she had to cancel so she was just messaging me all right time to put the phone away put it on silent anyways yeah it's fine now Awesome. Alright, well, and that's the nice thing. Refresh fixes 50% of everything. <laughs> the other 50% of the time, refresh again. <laughs> um, Alright, yeah, that's everything for variant and house rules that we really need to cover. Um, oh, yeah, one more. Um, and this one is kind of a big one. It does affect you guys. Uh, when you guys go to level up, it does take a week of downtime. And when time is on a crunch, <laughs> it is very important on how you spend that downtime. Uh, we w spent a session and a half on our first week of downtime uh, for leveling up uh, because of everything that was going on in the campaign. Um, um, as for the FAQ section, uh, I I welcome up to six players. We are at six players, so we are at a full capacity table at this time. Um, I don't like having less than four seats or four players, uh, and so uh, when we hit four players, I try to recruit, which is what happened. So. Mm. Um, Our sessions are going to be t around three hours typically. Um, I don't plan on them going longer. Sometimes they do go shorter. Um, this one's going to feel shorter just because we are doing all this introduction and uh, basically session zero stuff. Uh, uh, there's a lot of us who have played Pathfinder for a while. Uh, there are some of us who are relatively new. If there is a question on the ruling, which sometimes there can be because there's some vagueness to the rules and understanding of the rules. Uh, we'll go ahead and spend a few minutes to discuss it. If we don't come up with a decision, I'll, I'll come up with something for that session. That way we continue with the game and then we can discuss it further in the chat outside of game. Uh, and then we can have a solidified, solidified resolution for the start of the next session. Um, mm. Main thing is, let's just keep the game going. Um, do, uh, rules lawyering. Uh, basically, my understanding of a rules lawyer is when you act in a way with having knowledge and trying to enforce it on other people and trying to tell them how to play the game. Uh, let people play their game. I am in charge of the world. I am not in charge of your characters. Your characters are your own. And so, yeah. And then, uh, kind of something to cover with everyone, because this is new for everybody here at this table, is uh, probationary periods. Um, uh, Cody and Butter, you guys are, are new to the table. You're on a probationary period just because you're new to all of us. Um, and so usually that's three to four game sessions. Uh, if you don't feel like it's working out, or if there's some problems, please reach out to me, talk to me, let me know. 
uh, and we can figure out what we need to do to uh, either fix it or uh, to come to a satisfying conclusion of some sort. Uh, and then uh, if yeah, if there's a problem, even if it's not the new players, um, I, I might even put a uh, pre-existing player on probation if they're having bad behavior or something like that. Um, things that I am have no leniency on is any act that attacks a person, so sexual harassment, racism, or any of those kind of activities. Um, I have kicked people for that. Uh, I have no problem with it. Well, I do have a problem with it, but I have no problem with kicking you out if that's the problem. So, um, I used to say I play a lawful evil GM. Uh, I have found out that I am not considered evil. I am considered neutral, apparently. Um, even though I have TPK'd Aaron and Baines' characters many times. So, uh, with that... Well, well deserved TPKs. <laughs> Uh, I don't know my my <laughs> poor little robot with like the big flying antler dudes. I don't know about that one. Yeah, and then there was say, the mimic doors. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ! I was gonna say I don't know if uh, all of those were deserved, <laughs> but that first one was legit. We did walk into a room with a dragon, so get fucked. Uh, that was not the first one, but yes, that one too. <laughs> <clears throat> Wasn't that that our first one? No, your first one was the. Uh, Garden. Garden? Oh, no, that was the other group. That was with Leo. Never mind. Okay. Um, but yeah. Well, no, wasn't our first one the ice, uh, like the ice cave thing with all the stones? See, there, there's been too many. <laughs> We're going to scare the new guys off. We uh, got to shut up. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Good. But so I'm I, not afraid of a TPK. Sounds like you That's had fun. <laughs> That's a challenge to overcome. Uh, it was fun each time. That's what I will say. Uh, I have not had a TPK in uh, several months, actually, which is nice. But great. <laughs> I am not looking for one. I am not trying to achieve one. Uh, if it happens, it happens. Um, I the reason why I fall more towards neutral apparently is because I will always cheer for you guys. I want you guys to succeed. I want you guys to have fun. Uh, but I am going to put challenges in front of you, and I am going to run the game as is. Um, that being said, I am a little bit more lenient as of late because you guys are lower level characters and so um, uh, when Julian's character did go down I gave him the option, hey do you want him dead or do you want a chance to play him out? And so uh, the party found a solution on their own uh, that, to uh, have him brought back. So um, It has been good. Um, there's been a lot of growing and having fun with this. And with that, we will go ahead and jump into kind of what's been going on with the adventure itself. So, um, the party started off by um, coming together at a tavern, the Open Tree Inn, or Open Tree Tavern. Uh, it is in the city of Kamaluhaya. It is, Kamala High is a free city. It is. It belongs to no nation, no kingdom, no. Uh, it's basically its own independent nation uh, within its own city. Uh, there are a number of cities across the world like this, uh, but not many. Uh, but Kamaluhaya, its main thing is it is a central, uh, peaceful place for the kingdom, or for the Silkmore Kingdom and the Dirt Cross to Maine to do trade. And so it is a huge trading port along the Misty Sea. And so a lot of traders come through, a lot of uh, commerce, and so there's a lot of different things that happen here. Well, at the Open Tree Tavern, uh, Kamina, the uh, keeper, uh, she just looked absolutely swamped, um, started talking with the players, 
uh, took their orders and the players saw that there was a disruption at the entrance with Kamina. Well, it was a number of individuals that she kicked out and when the party checked on her because she looked really upset, uh, found out that her daughters had gone missing and she blames these individuals. So, with that, the party decided to pursue. Um, they scared one off, tied one up, and uh, blunderbust one's head open. So, <laughs> the, oh, good to know that that's doing that. Uh, yeah, so the PC journal quest, that quest... That has the a lot of the quest information. Uh, the players then pursued them to the Derek Cross Domains warehouse district. Uh, went inside, um, dispatched of the outside guards, um, deceived the individuals inside the warehouse, made their way up to the office where uh, they fought with the person in charge of the warehouse uh, killed them and their goons took some documentation uh, and uh, for some reason decided to call up the individuals from downstairs to kill them up in the office as well <laughs> um, except for one who they captured and turned over to the authorities kind of Hey guys, it's been weird, like, I, I started off with this, like, hey, let's be friends with people and be cool, bro, and then they were all like, murder hobos are cool, so it's just, it's been a thing. I I think the first murder was genuinely accidental. It was, yes, it, it was. was. <laughs> it was a crit. It's right <laughs> in the street, yeah. It was a crit with a uh, pistol. <laughs> God. It, it was bad. Um, he was like, I wanted that to be non-lethal. You can't do that with a ranged weapon. Yeah, you don't have a lot of control over that. <laughs> yeah, bullets don't do non-lethal, bro. <laughs> Neither do fireballs. Just talk to the gun. Yeah. Fuck the gun before you shoot. Take it easy. <laughs> Take it easy out there. Jesus, you didn't have to go that far. Right. Um, so, um... Azan took the prisoner to the guards, and the guards ended up questioning Azan and letting the prisoner go. <laughs> um, and so the guards were after Azan uh, for all the murders that he confessed to <laughs> within the warehouse. <laughs> um, Ko, Nathan, and uh, uh, Mancini. Uh, went to the uh, druids to get Nathan revived or brought back. So I guess Nathan was dragged along. Um, and then William went to find a ship for sale to uh, take them to catch this ship that had the girls on it. Uh, you misspelled that. I misspelled what? Uh... He did not go shopping for a ship. He sold us out to guards who captured us. Well, I hadn't gotten quite yet there. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but yes. I uh, was this... searching for a ship. They just happened to be guards in disguise. And we happened to pay them to take us to prison. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and once they were uh, delivered to prison... Uh, and they found out that they were at prison and not at um, a transfer station for a faster ship. Uh, they quickly fought their way through. Uh, they found an individual who directed them to a ship. Uh, but it confused everybody because it was a ship in a bottle. Um, eventually, uh, they freed uh, three of the four pris other prisoners who were held in cells here. Um, they recouped their lost money, leaving what was left on the uh, table from a uh, guard's poker game and found a number of magical items, uh, weapons. They get outside, uh, back onto the dock they were on previously, and threw the uh, ship in a bottle into the ocean. 
uh, where the ship uh, exploded out of the bottle and became their actual ship, which is called, uh, what did you guys call that? Oh, you called it the bottle. <laughs> Um, so now you guys have a ship called the Bottle and three crew, crew members who can manage the ship and um, sail it for you guys. Um, it took about a week to sail from Kamlu Haya to the capital of the Dirt Cross Domain, Mallhaven, uh, whereupon you guys found that the girls had already been auctioned off uh, and uh, during the week of downtime, there was a lot of investigation into the girls, uh, the houses that they were no part of, as well as working with a black, local blacksmith to make a uh, very specific uh, katana for William. Uh, from there, with the information they had, uh, the group, um, after their week of downtime and leveling up, jumped on, back on their ship, sailed into the secret woods where people go missing and never return for the most part, looking for a organization uh, that supposedly has a creature called a bobble beast. Uh, the group was given two tags of teleportation uh, when applied can teleport a creature to a preset destination. And so uh, that is what the group is after. They have begun to wander in the secret woods where they found some uh, interesting mushrooms uh, that were not too friendly and attacked. Um, and that is pretty much where we left off with the adventure. Uh, correct me if I am wrong. Uh, we were failing to try and track down the bobble bee in the forest. Yeah. Kind of uh, trying to figure out what to do. Uh, we're also running pretty short on time. Uh, that is right, because it does take you a full week to travel from Kamlu, Ohio to Mallhaven. Uh, you guys are on, and you had one month to uh, return. So it's been two weeks now, and you're on two weeks and two days is where you're at. So, you are pushed for time indeed. Let me see here. So, we have one week to resolve our business here, or we'll uh, be late for Druid time. Pretty much, you've got four, four or five yeah. days. Uh, crazy, crazy idea. Are we locked to a time frame for when we have to have this Bobble Beast by? No. So we could literally just pause in the middle of this, go back, help the Druids, and then come back to this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then just wanted to point that we, out. take the girls we would just back have to, to stop back. Kamalu Haya again to take them home. Yeah. We just have to stop well, back could... by uh, the blacksmith. I get my sword before we go do the druid stuff because I don't want to leave it. There's that too. That's fair. And at this point, that is ready. <clears throat> you want to, like, travel time back to uh, the city to get the sword plus travel time to the druids. Like, is that, does that put us at less than four days? Well, all right. So you've got a full week to get to the druids. You've got four days, basically, of free time to do what you need to do in order to get back to the druids in time. Uh, okay. Are the druids... Is the city between... The druids are back at, like, Kamuluhai, right? So if we went to go pick up the sword, we could do it on the way, pretty yes. much? Yeah, because the um, Mallhaven is on the way. Yeah, Okay. I believe the plan right now is still a uh, bobble beast, yeah? Yeah, but we like just, if we, we just run out of time. Out little... Yeah, so last uh, time how long? you guys uh, started looking for the beast, you couldn't find it. You decided to rest for the night. And at the end of your guys' sleep and in the morning, uh, William 
who was on guard, noticed that there was an individual running away. We also made something with the wizard, right? Yeah, we made a, a bubble beast lure. Oh, that is right. You guys did create a lure. Uh, who's I think like out of five says, gold or something, right? Yeah, five pieces of gold made into a necklace. It's not a Pokemon ball. <laughs> yeah, it's a lure module. <laughs> oh, Makes probably more likely to appear in the area. <laughs> oh, fuck, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... <clears throat> William, are you going to tell us about this running away? All oh, right. Actually, no. That's not where we're starting this session. Oh. What? Uh, let's see here. I gotta remember character names because I am bad at that, and especially when it's new characters. So, Owen and Valen, as you guys are seeing what looks to be another apparite, uh, another. Uh, uh, gosh, illusion. I don't know why I kind of think of words right there. As you're looking at what appears to be another illusion, it looks like it now starts chasing after you. You know in the past that this is never good. Uh, you've spent a few weeks here now already trying to either find a way out or uh, your intended target to begin with. But now this red-haired armored individual with a funky looking sword on their hip starts running at you it, it doesn't look good so all right <laughs> hmm okay um valen looks down at owen and you can uh you can see through he, he got his helmet on that is in his his picture and he says owen get behind the tree as he goes to get behind a different tree Yep, will do, no problem. And as uh, this, this illusion runs uh, towards us, Valen gets ready to hit it with the flat of his great sword as it comes barreling by. Alright, um, I'm going to have both Owen and Valen. Go ahead and roll me um, perception, please, blind. Sure. Uh, on your character sheets, uh, there is a crossed out eye, which will automatically roll blind, or you can hold control and click on it. All right. Excellent. Uh, as you begin to notice this individual approaching, uh, you notice you're actually hearing footsteps. This is a real individual. This is not an illusion. Um, Owen, this is just another day of craziness in this stupid forest. You guys should never have got, come here. On the possibility that this uh, person approaching us may be the uh, the people I'm out here to get after, my plan doesn't change. Okay. Uh, William, go ahead and roll me a perception as you begin to chase these individuals, and you notice that one of but they both hide behind trees. Um, I would like to point out that when I began chasing the last time, um, I called out and I'm like, "Hello, please don't run." Can you help me? Uh, Owen or and Valen, does that affect you guys in any way? Man, when I'm out here searching for the type of people I'm out here searching for, that's just suspicious. That's bait, man. <laughs> well, I don't know. The, the, the last few illusions didn't do that. Well, that, that means it may be actually a bandit trying to lure us out. Just shush. I peek out from the tree. It doesn't look like a bandit, but... As, hmm? as you begin to get closer, William, you notice uh, the greatsword kind of sticking out past the tree. Almost oh, like, well, looking like it's going to be I, I, used to strike somebody. In mind. Uh, I'll, I'll stop. Um... And just walk at a reason, like a, a slow walk forward, and be like, "Hello, uh, great sword wielder behind the tree. Uh, I, I'm not trying to attack you. Uh, no. 
we're in the, a bit of a predicament and we haven't found anybody else out here. We might need some help. Uh, Valen looks over at Owen and then uh, you can see his shoulders drop a little bit and as he sighs and uh, he steps out from the uh, the tree and faces uh, this stranger. But he, he does keep his great sword uh, interposed between the two of us. I do the same, banjo in hand. All right, who are you? Uh, I, I do a little bit of a grandiose bow, uh, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm William G. Maryblood. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a long story, but we're trying to save people who are sold into slavery, and to do that, we need to buy them back, so we're trying to track down some bobble beasts. You wouldn't have happened to see any by any chance? Well, DM in the sky, have we seen any suspiciously bobbly looking creatures? Um, you definitely would not have seen any, but I would like you guys to go ahead and roll me. Um, go ahead and roll me society checks, if you would, please. Oh, that reminds me. Is this uh, recall knowledge or just straight society? Uh, this could be, yeah, let's go ahead and do a recall knowledge. Um, okay. I do believe, yes, we do. Uh, there is a basic actions macro uh, that has a recall knowledge in it that is exceptionally well done. Where it'll just, it is. Yeah. Actually, looks like, uh, yeah, looks like you imported one butter. Yeah. It's my favorite button in the whole thing of Foundry. <laughs> yeah, that that's a great macro. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Yeah, so that'll be a macro you want to draw to your uh, hot quick bar. Let's see here. Oh, only need one. Definitely not taking that one. There we go. Very nice. Well, we said it was going to be that. <laughs> Interesting. Um. Oh, very nice. Uh, as you guys are have been paying attention to your uh, your own little quest that you're on, uh, you do recall hearing that uh, this organization that you're after uh, had some sort of beast with them, and that they were always wearing f a lot of jewelry. Alright. We might be looking for a group of individuals that have such a beast, but we've had no luck in finding them so far. Will help. Really? Well, in that case, at least, I believe our party's goals align. Mine are back at camp behind me a ways. I ran out. I didn't want to miss you all. Um, so, yeah, the, the more that we can search, we can, you know, fan through the forest and uh, see if we find anything. Uh, Valen looks down at uh, Owen. See what you know, how he's feeling. Uh, Owen smiles. Sounds good to me. We've ha we mm. haven't had any luck. <laughs> Fair enough. And many, Valen, many hands make light work. Light work, right? Valen uh, slides his great sword back into its scabbard on his back. Uh, should we physically describe our characters now that like William can see us, or should yeah, we that would wait? Be great. Okay. Um, because, I mean, everybody else will hear the description. Yeah, okay. Um, the one that's been referred to as Owen as Valen is a tall, humanoid-like figure. You can't really tell because he's covered head-to-toe in armor and clothing. But um, humanoid in split male armor, uh, set over padded armor. Uh, his, his armor is dirty, but it's not uncared for. It's just, you know, he's been out in the middle of the, the sticks. And as you've already been... 
introduced to his large great sword that is currently resting on his back, sitting in a leather scabbard. Besides that, he's got a helmet on him, and you can't see his face. Yet. And then uh, Owen uh, is about three foot six, dark red hair, um, banjo for his musical instrument, uh, has a rapier on his back that looks like it's never been used, um, and a dagger on his hip that, like, kind of the same, looks like it's never been pulled out of the sheath. Um, <clears throat> uh, real chipper. Padded, uh, padded armor, um, and uh, kind of always got a smile on his face. Excellent. While you three are occupied out there, uh, the rest of you, Nathan, Co, and Azan, uh, you wake up to William running off uh, quickly after someone or something. If you can go ahead and give me perception checks. Nathan and Azan, you guys are able to pick up on what uh, William said. Uh, you're able to identify that he is after someone, apparently, or some people. Uh, whereas Ko, uh, you were enjoying that dream, whatever it was. It's gone now, but you were enjoying it. Uh, obviously, I'm going to pursue. Because otherwise I might run into more mushrooms and die. <laughs> so I'll get up from my bedroll and give chase after William for backup. All right. Uh, Nathan. Uh, do we have, we don't have like a camp set up really, right? We just like threw down bedrolls and took a nap. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll scramble after them. Nothing here we really need to keep track of. Okay. Co, it takes you a few seconds to gather yourself. Uh, are you following after your colleagues after you see that they run off as well? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, eventually, everybody gathers uh, not too far from the trees as uh, William and these uh, two new individuals start walking back to you. Uh, I'm going to call out when we start approaching the camp. Uh, Don't worry, I found friendlies. You're the keeler. Why are you running? <laughs> <laughs> Shizuru demands action from all of her patrons. Right, right, right. As we're walking up, I'm just kind of quietly drumming on my uh, banjo. Like, not strumming it, but like just quietly drumming on it. Uh, I guess if it's cool, I'll just... Because I would have, like, lit the aura up, right, for channeling elements. So, as he heads back, I'll just juggle some fireballs or something to look cool. Very well. So, when we're all in earshot, um, I just kind of stand off the side in between the two parties. Uh, and I'm like, so, these guys here, uh, and I give introductions of uh, Valen and... Uh, Owen. Uh, Owen, thank you. Yep. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, they're looking for people that might have a bobble beast, so uh, I, I think we can work together. They're looking for the people, not the bobble beast? Exactly. So we team up to get their people, we get our bobble beasts. Are good with this? You guys good with this? I'm after a person that's supposed to be with this group. 
got a lead on them back in town, and I'm interested in talking to them. And I kind of just follow him around. Is there a yeah. particular reason you're hunting this person? Personal business. Okay, we might have to beat them up. Is that okay? I don't carry around the sword for, you know, sightseeing. Oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> Here's a question, DM. Uh, with um, my archetype, it has a constant effect that has the visual trait, and I have no idea what it looks like. So, you know, if it's, it's there for the rest of the guys to notice, absolutely there for it. I just wanted to see how you would interpret that that ruling. Oh, yes. Uh, da, 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 da. It is uh, the aura, specifically. Yeah. It has uh, emotion, mental, and visual traits. I just... I don't, it's not magical, so I'm not glowing or anything, I don't think, but maybe right. something you can see. It, it's more <laughs> of you have to be able to see them for them to gain that effect. Oh, gotcha. Okay, that tracks. Okay, thank you. Brain fart. Never mind. No worries. I said nothing. Um, <clears throat> I do have one curiosity with it, and it's not in the fact of can you take it? It's more of does anybody else have it? Because I know it's a, it's one I commonly take, so... I <laughs> this this is the only one I take when I play five. <laughs> um, let's see here. Do you scare people? Oh, I I oh, don't scare right. people. No. Oh, okay. I'm gonna do that. I I inspire people. Oh, okay, cool. I was like, yeah, you just look more noble and awesome than most normal people would be. Your <laughs> visual, if you want. All right. So uh, luckily. I thought I thought someone forgot theirs, but then I remembered a few discussions. So, um, yeah, actually, I'm surprised nobody else has taken that uh, archetype. So, we're all good there. Good for me. All right, I'll uh, I'll cease derailing. So, so we're a party of gingers. I just want to point this out. <laughs> oh God, because uh, I'm a tall, muscular, green-skinned, dirty ginger that can't be bothered to wear a shirt or shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no shirt, no shoes, no service. Eh, no, They're gonna that, give me service. I'm that, seven foot two and a bunch of muscle. <laughs> you're gladly accepted at the blacksmiths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only, well, I mean, half the party's ginger. Yeah. I'm a rat. <laughs> I I don't have skin. <laughs> like, you don't I have, have skin, skin, but skin. you got hair. You got skin. skin. I mean, I, under the hair, there's skin, but maybe I am ginger. You just don't know because. It's like fur. Yeah, maybe the fur is, is just dirty. <laughs> but alrighty, uh, Valen looks at you all and he goes, alright, what's your plan for finding this beast? We well, look for it. I'm a tracker, but uh, we ain't got any tracks to track at the moment, so it doesn't do as much damn good. That's the trouble I've been having, too. I'm not too bad at tracking myself, but half the footprints in this forest are illusions. Oh, well, that's just love. We just Wait, got how? here, so we didn't know that. Do, do illusions leave footprints? No, the footprints themselves are illusions. Also, just throwing it out there for you two, we are in a bit of a time crunch, so uh, this guy right here, and I'll uh, clap... Uh, Nathan. Nathan on the shoulder. Yep. Um, <laughs> and then we will. Uh, uh, we revived him, and we owe his life to some druids. So uh, we don't really want that debt to go in the red. We got to be back in like a couple days. We got to leave. Are they gonna take his life back if you don't finish this up? You know, we're not good. Really sure. nice people. We don't want to, <laughs> you know, let him down. It's smart oh, no, not for to sure. find out. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I mean, wait, but the, well, I don't. I just met you, but I don't want you to die. So, <laughs> I, I, I probably won't die. I can't imagine they'd be vindictive. I just we said we'd help, and I mean, they did me a solid, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they could claim some circle of life nonsense and kill you that way, and you know, then it's not vindictive. It's just a balance or whatever, you know. It's it's a life debt. You have to pay life debt. 
Anyways, have you guys found anything that leads you to these people? Looks into the camera. Have I done do? Um, with all of your time in the secret woods, uh, let's go ahead and yeah, go ahead and do another recall knowledge. Uh, this time, oh boy, going to go with. Uh, Owen, if you would roll recall as well. Oh no, I did poor. <laughs> well, no, it's just because you guys have been traveling together. Oh yeah, true. Alright, let's see. Also, pardon me if it was mentioned, but how long have you two been in this area? Dealing with illusions? So how does this module, the bonus action macros work for recalling knowledge? I got it down to my bar now. Uh, there, if you hit the button, it'll open a menu, and one of the buttons in alphabetical order will have recall knowledge, and you just click it, and it, it'll fire off a me message to uh, the DM. Yeah, oh, okay. the DM so does work. That's go ahead great. And, let's go ahead and do it again, and I'll reveal it so everybody can see it. Uh, <clears> so I will answer that question once I get that from the DM as well. <laughs> oh, interesting. It does not. Sh oh, it, oh, does it only show it to you, Cody? It doesn't show me anything. I've clicked oh, yeah, the it only twice. shows to it, it only shows to you. We get a pop up that says character name tries to remember something about this topic. So it yeah. only displays to you. Interesting. Well, because I said um, make it public, and oh. it's still only showing to me. So that's mm. interesting. Um, I get. I'll take a screenshot of it. I guess. Ooh, no, words, I just didn't know if it was working or not. Yeah, it, it, it's working perfectly fine. Uh, <laughs> okay. but yeah, it pops up with a little box that says uh, all these different skills. Uh, it shows me your cool. proficiency, uh, what your mods are, um, and then it has at the very top what the die roll was. And so on tight, the tight. far right side, it gives me the result of that roll as well. So it's pretty ah, nice. Awesome. Um, earlier, somebody rolled a natural one and all popped up in red saying, hey, critical failure. I'm like, <laughs> I've I fooled with this module when I was a DM, and it's it's interpreting it, uh, uh, the role rules as written. Since recall knowledge are all, always secret, it actually won't let you display it to public oh. because I've tried that too. Nice, but I like that. Okay, cool. it's doing. So, um, <laughs> yeah, um, you guys have been suffering these last two weeks trying to find anything. It, it's Jesus, we've been here for two weeks. <laughs> it's been miserable. Oh, no. uh, you're running the um, supplies, and it's it's not good. Okay, um, Valen, uh, it's, is it is it Azan? Is is that how I say it? Oh, Azan. 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 There we go. I, I'm gonna screw up all your names several times. Just bear with me. Um, he looks at you, and uh, you can see he's about to answer, and then he hesitates, and then he goes to answer again. We've been here for longer than we planned to. It means two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we all work together and get it done today, it's a two weeks well spent. Well, I came into this forest assuming, you know, bandits, they need to eat, they have tracks. Now, you know, as I've mentioned, some of the tracks were illusions, makes it harder to track them. And you also can't get out of the forest very easily, so it's been quite the conundrum. <laughs> well, three of us are trackers, so maybe we can uh, work together. So, I'm well traveled myself. I might be able to help. All right, four of us. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you guys besides just looking for them, did you have any other strategies? Well, not particularly. Last night. Yeah, we made a lure for the bobble beast, but that's not going to do much good if it's on like a leash or a cage or something, right? Well, that's true. I don't know how they have it. It's kind of a risky maneuver, especially if you guys are on a time crunch. And, well, me and Owen are... <laughs> we've got another week of supply left. 
I mean, did y'all have an idea of where these folks might be holding up? The forest. Forest. Well, goddamn, it's a big place. I guess we just... Would we have seen any, like, snares or, like, hunting traps or anything in the in the area? Um, you would have seen some creatures. Um, at least if that's what you want to call them. But, um, trap-wise, uh, not so much, so, um. Well, actually, yeah, you guys have kind of been pulled into a few yourself. Um, being strung up by your feet and having to cut yourself down. <clears throat> uh, have, falling into pits of dirt, but there's never been any like malicious or harmful effects from it. Just hunting traps, right? Yeah. Pa- partially hunting traps and also just make people look like fools kind of feeling yeah interesting are these folks that you're looking for are they they like us or are they, they something else well i intend to beat one of them black and blue so let's say something else okay are, are they elemental plant-based um fairy as far as i know they're they're people like us when i'm sorry i misinterpreted oh, okay. what, what you meant by that Gotcha. Well, if they're people like us, then they're going to need a steady source of water to supply their place, so maybe if we start searching along the local water tracks, we might find something. That's true, but they could also have a wellspring somewhere. Yep. I was thinking, too, if we find another trap or another like, uh, snare that one of us could get trapped in, I would... Uh, well, I don't want to be willing to be the one, the damsel in distress, necessarily, but I will... Uh, Definitely intentionally set it off to uh, cause a ruckus to see if that lures anybody out. I mean, as long as you all are nearby <laughs> to to help me um, and not leave me there forever. I mean, if you're willing to do that, we could also have a way to lure. Uh, yeah. Uh, just out of curiosity, how how dense is you know like the, the trees and the foliage in this area? Uh, in this area, it's not too bad. Um... You're able to see a good distance, um, but there's plenty of trees, there's plenty of mushrooms, uh, especially those large mushrooms. Holy cow, was that kind of awkward and weird. Um, but you've you've learned to stay away from the mushrooms, um, for the most part. <laughs> um, and how tall do we feel these trees are? Um, some are 20 feet, some go up quite a ways, about probably 50 feet. It's crazy. I guess the better question. They are. <laughs> And size and the better foliage. question oh sorry keep Go talking over to you i don't mean to do it um <laughs> where's the canopy of the forest um so uh, owen and valen you guys would kind of know uh, it really depends on what part of the forest you're in uh, there are places where mm-hmm. it is dense the foliage is low um you just you can't get much sunlight but it always seems lit, and then there's other areas where it's nice and open, uh, kind of like this area is right now. Um, but I mean, you've seen in some spots that it's a little more open than it is here. So um, it, it just really depends on what part of the forest you're in. Um, but right okay. now, it, um, it's a pretty open space. Assuming this is what Valen would have been doing when we first got here, he probably would have just done the very typical thing, like try to section different pieces of the forest off and go through by through. But this, the nature of this forest, I'm assuming that has completely failed to uh, help him at all. Well, with all the illusions and whatnot, of course it has. Absolutely, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, <laughs> all right, um, Valen looks at the uh, the rest of you guys and says, "You're." bait for this beast is probably the best thing we've got along with what Owen said, so we can go give that a try. If you guys want to pack up, we can go try and find one of their snares. Shoot, let's try it. Alright, so things you guys were looking for is snares? Streams? Yep. Uh, What else was it? Whatever, uh, snares, uh, water, just whatever they're using to collect food, because, you know, someone's gotta come check that eventually. And also, if we tie a gnome to it, that's screaming that may get some attention quicker. 
Yeah, I was thinking like you know the you know you know the classic movie snare that pulls the guy up into the air in a net, or you know like a pit trap that we can set off and then I can lower down carefully. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm trying to intentionally set a trap off so that that I, I mean, I will physically be trapped, but uh, anybody else in our party would be able to hiding in the bushes nearby. Yeah. Take up, take up cover, and uh, I'll make make as much noise as I can. <laughs> I'm looking for any signs of life, not just traps, but like if I could smell maybe a latrine pit for camp, or campfire, or anything okay. that says human habitation or humanoid habitation. All right, with that. Um, oh, I guess I gotta do this. I hate doing it, but... Hmm. Alright. I will give someone an extra hero point. Uh, not for this session, but start of next session. If they can find me a module that works with Pathfinder and the party folder, where I can just drag and drop everybody onto a scene. I... <laughs> Because individual there, right? that should already be integrated into this. Um, they did it with the Kingmaker module. I think if you if you assign the party, like yeah, you've already assigned us the token. You can drag the party out onto a scene and like unpack us from the party token. Okay, so do that, and then how do I? Oh, oh, I like that. Thank you. And that way, if we're moving as a group, you don't—we don't all have to, you know, be waddling around. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, and that's what I've previously done is just a party token. Um, but this. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, I like that. That worked out really cool. Um, they added it in the same update. They pushed the Kingmaker uh, two E module out, and it's been awesome. All right, I am very happy with that. You can have an extra hero point start of next session. Woohoo! Do you even have to find the module? Oh, right. Yeah, there's a Defred's droppables one that did yeah, it beforehand. But before, but now that the yeah, now that there's yeah. the party one, it doesn't work. But I mean, it would work with other things. So if I wanted to drop yeah. those, uh, but yeah. Oh, that's right. This isn't working right. Kingmaker one would probably be fun to play in. Oof, playing probably not run with how much there is. Uh, I don't know with like all the updates they did, maybe. maybe. The entire it, it's like a hundred dollars to buy it, so that's the first little block. <laughs> but once you have it, everything is set up. The DM only has to read the prep and then play the game. Yeah, the Foundry models. I like that. Nice. Yeah, they're making nice. a wrath of they're making a wrath of righteous one that I absolutely want to get into when it comes out, but not until then. Yeah, Paizo has done a great job on all their Foundry modules, in my opinion. Oh, I'm exploring. Since, uh, since you guys we haven't... Started... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, getting back to the game. Uh, since you guys have started to uh, pack up and head out, if I can get your guys' exploration activities. So, since we haven't found tracks yet, would we be searching instead of tracking? Uh, searching sounds like the right idea on that one. I'm Gosh. assuming that they both have the same roles, but um, actually, if we if we got anybody else searching, I will scout. Yeah, there we go. You've Get got two people searching so far, so. All I right, I will scout. I'll help search as well. Just, uh, we're looking for stuff. <laughs> yes. Um, <coughs> let's see here. I am dropping the scout effect into uh, the chat log. If you guys would not mind dragging that on, t <coughs> there's nothing for you guys to drag onto yourselves. Or, Pretend I mean, we drag it onto ourselves. Yeah. There's no like, myself to drag onto. Yeah, there's no token for you guys to drag it onto. <laughs> Right. 
If you're trying to set your your activity, you open the party tab or the party character sheet, whatever. You go over to exploration, and it has a little plus sign uh, activity, and that's where you can uh, set it up. Yeah. Uh, so we can actually drag it under effects on our character sheets. Yeah. Oh, how about them items? Well, I already put it on everybody, so there's that as well. All right, so everybody has it. Um, you're gonna have to figure something out for that, but we'll see. Um, let's see here. I've got Val and Nathan, William, Co, Owen. I am missing Azan. Azan, if I can get your exploration activity, if it disappeared on you, I can pop, have it pop back out for you as well. Yeah, could you have it pop back out, please? Yep. There you are. Um, Scout. Okay. With those of you who are searching, um, if I can go ahead and get secret perception checks from you. And then, uh, Nathan, you've got Detect Magic up. Perfect. Yep. Um, see if I can see any more of those illusions. Everyone, up, everyone around you is an illusion here, out here alone. <laughs> <laughs> that seems legit. Okay. you suddenly become aware that you're living in a simulation? Uh, I mean, we that. all kind of literally are, right? Exactly. You're played played by fourth dimensional beings. <laughs> uh, as the you Matrix, are all the way. Um, looking about, Nathan, you do notice that Valen and Owen do have some magical Oh, wait, you want to know they specifically. You do detect a small amount of uh, magical things in the area out of us <laughs> i i know i'm i'm so i'm so used to fifth editions detect magic the magical pipe bomb in my bag right shh you're not supposed to let them know not yet oh i'm sorry <laughs> um oh yeah i forgot about that one i'll have to change that on theirs um, with that, uh, you guys begin going about. <laughs> um, it takes some time. And as you begin to explore, you begin to... Uh, uh, Nathan, as you're exploring, you just... As, no matter where you guys go, you keep constantly having this magical interference where you're always detecting magic. Um, uh, so I'll just... I guess I'll kind of just let everyone know. Like, it feels like this whole... I don't know if this whole place is magic or I'm just getting some interference from something else weird, but something's up with this place. Probably my spoon, if you can detect tiny magic items. Your spoon? Got a spoon. I've got a teaspoon I can stick into things and get rid of poison. That's useful magic right there. <laughs> Only works like once a day, but it is nice to have when you, you know. You're out in the middle of nowhere. Could well, you stick it in a steak? Uh, does it once per day, and it only works about you know a gallon's worth of stuff. I wonder if you stab somebody with it, could you purify their blood to water, thus killing them? He just looks at you. <laughs> uh, 
I'm, I'm a doctor. It's for science. <laughs> You're a cleric. Would you become a doctor? <laughs> He's always Same been a thing. doctor. I've been a back alley doctor for years. Oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> That's, I'm a part-time detective. Uh, but, you know, not officially anywhere. There's always been people too poor to afford surgeries and medical treatments, and that's where I travel around from town to town, just helping the disadvantaged by any means necessary. I don't know if this is going to help any, but if you like, uh, how, how does the spell work? Uh, if they um, intentionally leave something out, then they won't pick it up. Oh, oh that, that was Valen asking, so I'll wait for him to get it. Oh, from Nathan. Gotcha. I'll. When you leave it out, what? So you can intentionally you can... leave out uh, magic items that you are aware of. So your detect magic will not oh. detect the magic you are presently aware of. Yeah, but the. the te feel like we went over this lot like because i'm low so low level like i don't i can't detect cool stuff right yeah so you won't you be can able only... to detect specific items uh you'll be able to t detect if there's magic within the aura it's like you can't yeah it, i can't even say how many auras or whatever just it, if it's, it's there of, or not it's yeah. kind of like an if and statement like if magic then yes if no magic then no um mm -hmm. eventually it becomes Hey, you know that there is a item of this magnitude within your range. <laughs> and then eventually... Yeah, you know all the things. Oh, there's this thing. But yeah, Balin uh, asked Nathan uh, just how did the spell work, because he doesn't know. He's oh. stupid as shit. Oh, not the spell. I have uh, no detect. idea. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Valen kind of accepts that and goes well all right um if i like showed you the spoon would that help and, you know you know that's not what you're looking for uh, i i can i mean knowing that it would there would help me discount it but i guess okay uh, yes let's do that thank you okay. uh, uh i'll i'll not include that for future detections all right, Owen, you might want to get the thing you but you think about job you have out as well. Um, and uh, Valen just he pulls out his spoon, and it's it looks like a wooden spoon, but to uh, the non magical eye, I'll, I'll put it to chat so everyone can see it. Now I'm digging through Owen's pockets and figuring out what he's got. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think all I've got are a uh, couple healing potions and a five pack cantrip deck. Um, I believe that's all I've got that's magical. Yeah, I think so. Five pack? Yes, five pack cantrip deck. So it's five cards that you can uh, bind cantrips into, and then anybody can use them. Interesting, like one use? Yeah. Almost like spell scrolls. Yeah, but uh, anybody that's martial that doesn't know any magic can use these. Um, they just state the name of the card and fires off. It's got a set DC. Does it blue eyes white dragon? Something like that? <laughs> it could be one. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! So, while we're looking around, I'd like to occasionally like clamber up the highest tree and see if we can see anything of note, like from a high point, and also see if we can identify any of these illusory uh, footprints that these two have been encountering already. Alright, so I'll, I'll with you guys going out about Nathan saying, hey, there's a interference with my magic um, uh, with identifying the magical items, Nathan's detect magic is working a lot better <laughs> uh, where every now and then you guys will 
have actual magic uh, alerting to um, Nathan's spell, but also um, as you guys are walking about, uh, Owen, um, right before it's a little too late, uh, you stop everyone as you find that you are looking at an illusionary pit, <laughs> or at least the road or the path in front of you is illusionary as there is a pit before you. <laughs> yeah. Hey folks. Uh, and I, I pointed out <laughs> found a pit. <laughs> so I guess this plan is a, uh, is a go. <laughs> well, do you want to work? Any way to climb out or anything? I can fix it up for you. I we mean, could, uh, go ahead. We could put the snare inside the... Well, I don't know how this beast hunts. Hmm. Well, uh, never mind. Uh, question. Which which way does it go? Is it... Uh, looks like solid ground is a pit, or is a pit... Looks like solid ground. Yes. You said the same thing. Uh, but yes, it is a oh, a pit that sorry. looks like it's solid ground. <laughs> is a pit looks like ground, or is ground looks like pit? Is pit looks like ground. Um. <clears throat> um. All right, so Valen looks around this pit. You know, it's, there's a path, so, you know, this is traveled at least... Um, so, you know, they'll probably walk through here every now and then. Uh, just around the path, is there sufficient foliage and trees to, uh, you know, put the party behind? Uh, this is kind of the environment you're looking at, where there is just grass everywhere uh, that seems to be tr uh, luminescent, glowing. Uh, the trees are just gnarled and close. Uh, they viney, tons of greenery. It would be very hard to see someone coming and going. Um, and so being able to hide in here would be quite easy to do. Well, that's good news, because diamond armor. Um, all right, uh, Valen kind of gestures around and says, I think we can hide here pretty easily once we get Owen in the pit and possibly screaming for help. Did you want to set up that snare you made? I, I have nothing about these bobble beast I know about. Uh, it's just a, a lure. Uh, if somebody's going to be sitting in the pit as a captured person, I can make uh, some holes in the walls, earthen structures, so that they could climb up pretty easy. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, Sounds good to me. This pit is going to be very difficult to climb out of at three <laughs> feet deep. Cool. Then I'll go ahead and uh, channel elements and use extended kinesis to uh, sculpt the, the the earth. I don't uh, want to stick so out of it six feet or six inches. <laughs> there are easy easy <laughs> handholds for for them to be able to climb on up and out. Insult yeah, to good. entry for the short person. <clears throat> All right. Very awesome um do and you so just we, want to give him that that snare and he can just like i don't know rattle it around maybe that it would attract it while he's finging panic should i create some uh cover for us do you think we guys we, we got that with these trees and stuff but there i mean i think your cover would stand up more than these trees would okay <laughs> yeah into the leaves we go do you do you want to guys do you want him to like rattle around your snare and maybe attract that beast you're after i think nathan's got it right yeah we've got it right here i mean um, just just an idea are all these vines or are some of the branches could we like weave some vines together to like make a trap door kind of like nature tarp to pop out and attack the people that check on the snare you most like most certainly could. Uh, I would require a crafting check to do so. Would it change our camouflage very much between? Since you already said this is very going to be very easy. Um, it 
it is possible to increase it or possibly even decrease your uh, modifier a little bit. <laughs> Nathan, did you want to? How bad? You know how bad it is. <laughs> yeah, I can. I can do that. I've. You guys might have to give me some instruction because I'm not a. What you call it? Not a, a trap person, but I'll do what I can. I can help you. Yep. Uh, so if I can get crafting a secret. Chokes, uh, nope. Public. Uh, start with. Um... Okay. Okay. Um, you guys are able to get a little bit of something put together to kind of hide behind. Um, it's okay. Not great, but it's okay. Um, well, alrighty. That'll have to do. And I guess we're going to squat down and... <clears throat> Signal Owen to start screaming like a trap gnome in the pit. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, if I could go ahead and get uh, everybody except for Owen to roll stealth with a plus one uh, condition or oh, brother. circumstance bonus. Uh, Since we're in exploration, is it possible to follow the expert? Yes. If we have an expert. <laughs> What does that do? Give us plus one. Uh, so let's Wait. see here. Um, can I aid our expert because then my cooperative nature would give him a plus four circumstance bonus. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, <laughs> not because you guys are all having to hide. So you can either That's roll true. your own stealth or roll a uh, follow the expert if we have an expert, oh, which I don't believe we do. Why am I doing no that? rogue moment? Why am I doing this the hard way? Oh, That's like stealth. Character. No, we don't have an expert. This is terrible. Right. Secret yeah. stealth or open? Uh, stealth is always secret. Uh, folks, I've got bad news for you. I've got no <laughs> decks, and I'm in heavy armor. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right. Is it a skill check or sneak on the macro? Sorry, I missed uh, that. They would both be kind of the same thing because you'd end up rolling stealth either way. Oh, wait, there's a hide button that would probably do it. Was it not outputting? Um, yeah, it wasn't working for me. Yeah. I might, maybe it's because you need a token selected. I'm not sure. I'll just do it the hard way. That makes sense. Uh, right now I've got Azan, Co, Nathan, and William. Uh, Owen. As you are in this pit, uh, could I go ahead and get probably your worst skill uh, performance, please? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of so course here's and... my... Go ahead. Um, if I'm sitting still, do I need to apply my armor check penalty? Uh, actually, no, you would not. Okay. Well, we're at plus zero instead of plus <laughs> negative three. <laughs> Yep, and it's Alan I'm missing. Right. Oh, uh, sure. Hold up. That was supposed to be private. I'll uh, re-roll that. Okay. And you want this performance uh, private as well? Uh, nope. This one could be public because everybody right. is meant to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how we do. Um, yeah, only 12. <laughs> and, and, and I will remind you, you do have hero points. You are at full because you did roll natural 20 earlier. All right. Well, yeah. Then I will. Uh, I'll reroll that. Let's do that. Okay. There we go. That's Seventeen. That'll better. Yeah. Awesome. All right. And how long are you willing to do this performance, uh, Owen? Uh, this is my job. I I am willing to perform as long as there are people that are willing to listen. So <laughs> I know that they're nearby. I will I will keep laying it on thick. Uh, <laughs> you know, really, really, as long as it takes. Uh, you know, I'm. You know, I I probably start with like a just kind of hollering out for help if it seems to go on for you know half hour, an hour. Uh, I might stop 
yelling for help and just start kind of pretending to be uh, uh, coming to terms with being stuck in a pit. Maybe I start into a, like a rendition of, uh, you know, a Sven's uh, Lost in the Woods song from Frozen 2. Uh, you know, something along those lines, but just laying it on thick. Very nice. Well, it does take a long time. It is almost dusk by the time you start hearing footprints or footfalls. And with that, the darkness is helping a little bit with your guys' hiding. Uh, it also does not help that this grass seems to just keep on glowing no matter what. <laughs> as soon as I hear like footfalls, I start getting louder again. Hello? Hello? I'm stuck in a pit. Anybody out there? Help! I've got a bit of coin if you get me out of this hole. As... an individual begins to approach. Uh, let me see here. Oh, I wish you guys would make it easier. Okay. They seem to be very hesitant to come too quickly. Um, for those of you who are outside of the pit, uh, you notice that they are taking their time, looking around, being extra cautious. Almost as if they themselves even expect for there to be traps and illusions set for them. What do they look like? They are a dark-skinned individual with <laughs> Gosh, we just talked about this too. Uh, long auburn hair. Mm. Okay. Cousin? He's kidding. <laughs> What are they uh, dressed like? Um, they don't appear to have much in terms of armor. Uh, they look like they are wearing mostly just fabric clothing. Um, as they have. what is basically just a crude mace in their hands. Uh, a lot of their clothes seem to have um, grass and mold just growing out of it. As they kind of get closer, you hear them call out in common there's someone actually in that pit. Yeah, somebody's in this pit. There's a little fella. Can't get out. <laughs> just walking along. Uh, and then uh, just, you know, turns out the, the ground wasn't real ground. It was fake ground, and I fell in the hole. Been in Is here for a uh, couple hours. <laughs> Is this um this individual? Is is he kind of matching the descriptions me and Owen got? Not really. Not for the individual you're looking for. But yeah, yeah. I was, I was asking, like, is, is could he be maybe in the group? Well, it, it's an actual person. Well, so far it seems like an actual person. I mean, you've heard them, so. It's not an that's illusion. True. So, I mean, that's that's a step in the right direction. You're okay, a real person, a right? Question. You're not an illusion, right? Been a lot of fake things out here. The fake things you can't hear. Okay, good point, good point. <laughs> so, then again, I guess you could just have a sound box kind of 
thingy going on where it's just making noise over and over. Kind of like those birds. Wait, you're not a bird, bird. are you? No, not a bird. I'm a gnome. <laughs> Will you tell me the birds aren't real? Well, no, there's there's birds that are real, but they also talk and they're a headache. Oh, okay. Are you going to help me out of this hole or not? <laughs> and you haven't even seen this individual yet, so. No. <laughs> I'm just calling out of the hole. And, and uh, the rest of you outside the pit, you can see that he is uh, very skeptical about approaching. He is constantly looking around. Uh, almost like he believes that there should be some sort of trap from this situation. But we can't tell if he's a good person or not. Correct. Well, luckily, there's a, there are ways of finding out. <laughs> how, how deep did you say the hole was? Three feet. Impossible for a gnome to escape. <laughs> I, I twisted my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been down there for how long? few hours <laughs> oh you're pathetic how long have you been in the forest i've been lost for like two weeks <laughs> keep thinking i'm going east i think i've been going the wrong east is this east i mean i guess i guess it depends on which way i'm looking right now but do you uh, know which way is east Hearing that um, you've been in the pit for multiple hours and you've been in the forest for multiple weeks um, and that you're only in a three foot pit, uh, he, he quickly looks around um, and then without continuing this conversation with you, uh, begins to walk away. Is he within 40 feet? Yes. Of our little, little oh, he's dead. I'm uh, <laughs> captured then. Uh, I am going to, with my empty hand, luckily because I am wearing gauntlets, this is going to work out great. Sudden charge. Okay. I'm just bursting out. I'm probably tearing up the cover they worked so hard on, but I am, I am moving quick. So. All right, um, let's do this. I'm going to just drop everybody down. Uh, I'm just going to drop you in the middle of the scene. Screw it. Um, and I'm going to drop this individual. <laughs> just so we can get some initiative going. Uh, so, <laughs> if you guys wouldn't mind rolling... Sure. Do we roll perception or stealth? Uh, you guys are welcome to. Actually, let's do this. Oh, interesting. Because normally it's not a thing, right? We are in like a prepared position. Yeah. You yeah, yeah. Roll. You when you're in this, uh, you are when you're ambushing roll someone. Per, uh, perception or stealth. Uh, Dugan or not Dugan. Uh, oh, yeah, I don't know why my name says. I know, right? <laughs> I, probably because you had it set that way before. Yeah, the I think it must have had it. Yeah. Um, Funny. Damn, yeah. Update there. Um, awesome. You can either roll um, your performance or your um, perception. All right. Uh, good. Awesome. So if I... I actually don't remember what the ruling for this is. Um, if I start the encounter by doing something, do I do that and then fall back into initiative? Uh, so basically, I'm going to do the... Ball. Oh, did you not <laughs> roll yet? Hurry up. <laughs> oh. I was trying to figure out how to roll with still. 
<laughs> I don't uh, think I've ever done that before. I've, oh, okay. Yeah, if you would have mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what we'll go ahead and do, uh, since you're starting it off with charging out, we'll start with your turn being first, and then we'll go okay. back to the top of the or the start of the next round. Well, that that works out perfectly because you know I didn't tell them I was going to do this or anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I set and charge. And that is going to have me hitting the wrong button at the moment. <laughs> oh, let me unpause. Because I think it might say you have to be within certain range for attacks and such, but Yeah, it will. I'm almost positive. Alright, so I'll just I thought I had a macro for this, apparently not. I'm being too techy, I guess. Alright, I am sun charging, and I'm over here. Target him. And then I use a melee strike. And instead of that strike, I'm going to do... Actually, can I swap that out? Um, instead of a strike, I wanted to grapple, which is an attack, yeah. but... Okay. And I'm going to grapple. Charging forward and Attempt. tackling him down. Pretty much, and we'll see if this works. Mm -hmm. Hiya! That's a nine. I got a hero point, though. Okay. Oh. That went... No way. Oh, man, that's tough. <laughs> <clears throat> Damn. All right, um... <laughs> well, luckily I have an action left, so we're going to try again with map. Okay. Since it is an attack. Yep. I believe I'm at map Minus five. five. Yep. <laughs> there we go. There. Yeah. Alright. Interesting. Uh, with that, you get a hold of them quickly. With that, it will bring us back to the top of the round as we are now in an interesting little initiative. As Valen grabs him, he go he he just he says this through the armor, so you know it might not come through great, but he goes, sorry about this, pal, but we've got questions. I holler out like, Yeah, why wouldn't you help me out of the hole? <laughs> Yes, finger of death. Fallon melts. Uh, he is going to... Uh, he's going to attempt it. Uh, in a way that's positioned uh, you towards the others, he is going to cast... Uh, gust of wind, or at least attempt to. That is a manipulate action, right? It is, so he does have to pass a flat DC. Oh, uh, which it does not. And I also get to clock him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have reactive strike. Oh. <clears throat> so, let me retarget him, and as he goes to cat, snap. Non lethal damage. It. Go ahead and roll that damage as you. Actually, wait. Gauntlets aren't non lethal. Uh oh. Well. Well. We've cleared. Yeah. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. You attack with a weapon you're wielding, targeting one creature with a creature. Da, 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 da. Uh, but I'm. They're not also labeled lethal weapons either yeah yeah yeah. i think that's a 
I think lethal is like a different thing. Uh, but yeah. I think if they're not non-lethal, they're lethal and unless I pull back and take a negative two on my attack mod, I have to declare it. Yeah. yeah. And you did. So, uh, it would hit either way, so. Very good. Um, yeah, I just wordlessly club him the moment he, uh, starts trying to cast that spell. Uh, and even though you bring your hand across his, uh, face, he still gets the spell off. Uh, I am going to need... I'm going to need Valen. Oh. One, two, three, four. Let's do that. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wait. Hold on. One, two, three, four. No, oh, that's what we'll do. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, so, Ko and Azan, I'm also going to need saving throws from you two. Why is this not working? One. What kind? Target, target, target. And... Yes. Flex. Oh, come on. If you, um, are you hitting cast or just outputting the spell? I did hit cast, but it's doing it as a blind... Oh, here we go. There we go. That's what I wanted. Yay! Fortitude! I love fortitude. Sadly, it's not a fear effect. Oh, no! I... Well... Damn. He's got a DC on him. Luckily, I've got a... Uh... Damn it. What did I just have? Damn! Uh, I guess I'll re-roll with a hero point. As long as... Uh, praying for, you know, improvement. Uh, not an improvement. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that... Doo -doo -doo. A violent wind, uh, burst forth from the palm, <laughs> uh, right into Valen's face, causing him to... causing Valen to lose hold and fall prone. Actually... Oh, you know, boy. Actually, Valen, go ahead and roll me in athletics. See if you maintain your hold and pull him down with you. Yes, sir. Um, Azan and Joel. Co, you guys are knocked prone. Nope, you do not maintain your hold. Glorious, too. <laughs> oh. And then he is going to take 20 more steps away. Or 25? Let's see how fast are you. 25. All right. All right, William. I'm getting prone on you, too. All right. At this point, I'm this individual to... is about 65 feet away from you. You said 65? Yep. Um, okay, I will use uh, three actions to block him off from going any further with the party. feet away right, right in that area yeah okay well I guess we better get up <sighs> yeah we're, we're gonna move 50 feet up Okay. 
Oh, and down in the pit. Yep. Down in the pit. Uh, <clears throat> I stand up, my eyes peeking over the top of the pit. Um, I holler at him. Why are you running? Well. All right. Uh, he, he'll call back. It was a trap. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd run. <laughs> <laughs> Just to find somebody to talk to. <laughs> We're looking for mean people. You don't seem mean. I think uh, that ship may have sailed after Balin clocked him. <laughs> uh, Didn't let's... murder him. That's an improvement for this group. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would charge with a great sword. Use one uh, stride action to climb up out of this hole, I guess. Okay. Um, and I will then. Give. Uh, begin strumming on my. Um, banjo a little tune and oh that's that's not necessary at all there we go uh and play a courageous anthem um which here we go oh i don't know if you want to cast 60 foot emanation but uh i think that's everybody all of our friends here yep um uh me and all allies in the area gain a plus one status bonus to attack rolls damage rolls and saves against fear effects Actually, if you will pop it down, then it should give everybody that effect. Yeah, we'll do. Whoa! Uh, allies. You shouldn't have to target everybody. It should work automatically if you click that allies section. Yeah, I clicked allies. And... Oh. But we're not seeing the effect. Cool. Uh, and then, yeah, I think for the last thing, I'll just... Uh... Okay, yeah, he's far enough. Too far away. I will just... Uh... Stride over next to uh, some of the bigger guys. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, let's see. All right, Nathan. Uh, I don't think we're trying to hurt these guys. Um, can I, can I like, uh, how far away are they? We're kind of like, uh, abstracting distances right now, right? Yeah, uh, for you, about 60. Okay, uh, I wanna, my range is 30. Oh, it's a little far. Can I can I move thirty, and then cast scatter scree on the far side of them to create like a difficult terrain? Uh, do be aware you do also have William in that area, but yes, you can. Well, not like on them, but like because it does damage if you make it on them, but it also makes difficult terrain hexes. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you're. I see what you're trying to do. Yes, you most definitely could do that. So you're making difficult terrain for them to have to get away from the group yeah perfect yep go ahead and cast that uh sh should not force a damage roll but yeah. mm. 
so that is there. Um, There's that. A little bit of movement, scatter scree. Awesome. That looks like your turn. Oh, here I'll get the thing. Perfect. All right, Azan. Uh, okay, so having been knocked on his ass by some wind, uh, there's going to be a slight disdain that it seems like William has somehow recruited someone very akin to himself, another charger. Uh, but we're going to choose one action to stand up, <laughs> and uh, two actions to sort of like, I want to use all of my two actions to stride over and sort of triangulate my position based on where William and Valon are. Try it. Yeah. Uh, Valon would be a few, uh, about 20 feet behind at this point, 25. Uh, he's about 40 feet ahead of you. So yeah, you're able to start getting closer. Uh, closing in on that gap. That should bring us over to Valon at this point. Uh, Valon starts off pushing himself on the... Uh, pushing himself off the ground, standing up. As he uh, says mostly to himself, great idea, Valen, just tackle him. And then he is going to stride, stride twice. That's going to be 50 feet. Nice. And I believe put me a little bit behind it. Well, no, I was 20 feet ahead. So It, it would take you one stride to catch up. Okay. Um, in that case, we're going to sudden charge instead. Um and do the same thing as <laughs> I am a one trick pony okay. uh, charge swap the strike out for a grapple and here we go again and roll a nice eight and we'll fresh out of hero points so that's turn all right Uh, I'm gonna give up. There's six of you at least. This one moves like a mouse, getting through everything. Oh, good. I'm sorry for clocking you then. You could have just said that first. Speaking of such, and he goes to swing at you. <laughs> Uh, you already knocked me down. Uh, <laughs> an 18. Strength check? Well, he I don't have an unarmed attack with him. Oh, fair enough. Um, uh, but no. No. Ah, eh, fine. Whatever. Anyways. Uh, what were you... I thought he was about to <laughs> suplex me. <laughs> now he was just um... trying to clock you across the face. <laughs> <sighs> what is it you guys are doing out here? Bob Getting was... lost, for the most part. One of you said the true thing. Getting lost. That is 100% true. Unfortunate, but true. Wasn't lying when I said it's been two weeks. <laughs> oh. Looking at how skinny you are, I assume two months. No, it's been two weeks. Look, is, you, you a bandit. Depends on your definition of a bandit. Do you steal from people? Again, depends on who you're talking about. April. Normal uh, person. Do you, know, do you know where a bobble beast is? I'm guessing he's a druid. I've met a few bobble beasts. Have you met one that's in the company of bandits? 
No, because that would mean I'd have to be with the bandits. Do you, are there bandits in this forest? Most likely. Have you seen any? I've probably come across one or two. Valen goes to rub his forehead, but he's wearing a helmet. Um, <laughs> Didn't you say you're looking for something specific or someone specific, Valen? With the bandits. <laughs> well, what if he doesn't think he's a bandit? Like, from his point of view, maybe they're just people. Uh, Valen turns his visor <laughs> in your direction and says, He looks like a bandit. I do? No. Who does? The I'm guy he's looking for. <laughs> oh. Well, this guy in the armor kind of looks like a bandit. <laughs> well, because I've been in the forest for two weeks. One. I mean, you got all this armor. Like, holy cow! Most most bandits don't have that. I probably maybe bandits are people that just hang out in forests for two weeks. Who knows? Those are rangers. Look, are there people in this forest? Are there people with a base in this forest? Maybe. Well, I think we got off on the wrong foot. What's in it for <laughs> me? I'd love to ask this person to identify themselves. Do you live in this wood? Who are you? Well, you asked two questions. I thought you said you had a question for me. That A means one. <laughs> You are technically correct, and I acknowledge it. I have two questions. Okay, as long well, as we agree on that. Technically, an A could be made with three tally marks, so if you break it down, A question could mean three if you were to tally them all up to, in order to form the letter A. My head hurts. <laughs> I'm going to clock the rest of you next. Look, who are you? <laughs> While you guys are talking, you mind if I, I patch you up there a little bit there, buddy? Patch me up. Yeah, didn't he clock it? Yeah. You're, you're gonna patch me up? I don't see why not. If you're not the guy that we're after, then... <laughs> we weren't really meaning to beat anybody up that didn't deserve it. He looks at... <laughs> he looks at Valen specifically uh, before turning back. You were to... casting a spell. I cast a spell because you grabbed me. Uh, I grabbed the, you because you're are... walking down a suspicious magical forest. You are too. I'm looking for somebody. <laughs> you right. set up a trap. <laughs> because we're looking for somebody. What's your name, friend? We'll go with John for now. John would, uh... <clears throat> I don't want you to not be compensated for your time. So would, it, would, it, would, it, would a couple of coins uh, help get us the information that we're looking for? Um, not really. Coins aren't much use out here. Okay, would a couple of rations or some rope or a torch or something? Ooh. Now we're talking. Um, I wouldn't mind. I mean, I have soap. You want some soap? Ugh, that stuff's disgusting. Okay. Can't, uh, can't eat that. <laughs> <clears throat> I do like the rations. But uh, that rope will also be very handy. Yeah, I'm happy to okay. give you a rope and a couple of rations. Yeah. So I am John. And here, in this godforsaken forest, uh, yeah, there is a little bit of a band, uh, band of individuals. I uh, wouldn't necessarily call them bandits, uh, but uh, they are a little rough and tumble. They do do trades. Um, I've made some deals with them in the past, and there are some other individuals out amongst the forests. That also do trades. But, uh, you're probably wanting the ones that have all this jewelry and are just over the top. Um, because that's what Bubble Beasts do, is they make jewelry. So, 
Tell me I'm wrong. Not wrong. No, that sounds pretty right. All right. Unless you want me to, I could tell you if you want me. Uh, no, I like being right. And then why did you want to be told that you're wrong? Are you also a masochist? Look, I'm the stupidest one here, and I know what a rhetorical <laughs> question is, folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I am right. But my name is John, so don't call me right. So, anyways. Uh, John Wright? Hey. That, that was a good guess. <laughs> Give away his crew name. You know, John, no. I've got a friend of mine that likes to Thank use you. this name <laughs> of, I was speaking, so of course I was right. Yeah. yeah. I like him. All right. Anyways. You want this band of individuals who are have a lot of jewelry because you are looking for their bobble beast. Yes, that, that works. Okay, cool. So, you see this path you were got going down this way? As he points down yep. the trail. Yeah, don't go that way. Alright, okay. which way should we go? Yeah. Um, you see the sun up there? As you look up, the sun's gone. Yeah, that's not going to help you either. Okay. I just started with the don't damn follow sword. the path. You know, our wizards are the there's sun. a bunch of illusions. I'm guessing that's all all that. Oh, yeah. There's, there's so much magic here. Um, that's what I initially came here to study. Um, but there, there, it's, it's a lot. And then trying to get out of here. Uh, that's, that's a pain too. So, oh yes, uh, this, this band of jewelry individuals. Best thing to do, uh... Well, hold up. <laughs> and he starts to climb a tree. <laughs> starts looking around. A few seconds later, climbs back down. Well, oh, crap, I'm lost. <laughs> We're not supposed to go this way, but you were lost. And the path only goes one other direction. Well, technically, it goes in 359 degrees other directions. Okay, so when you make deals with these band of people, how do you find them? He thinks for a second. For a landmark? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, starts patting around on his body. And then he pulls out a rock. Yeah, was it this one? I think it's this one. And he kind of holds it out. Um, looks like a very mundane, basic white rock. Say more, friend. <laughs> Uh, it is a uh, rock. Um, basically, what you do is you put it in moving water, so like a stream or something, and then it starts floating, and you follow it. That's interesting. You know where the nearest stream oh, is? So sorry, sorry, sorry. It goes floating against the current. Or at least for the most part. Okay. And then it shoots across the water. It it, it gets you to them. It, it's funky. It it works. Uh, where do so we get one if... of these fancy rocks? Well, as long as you don't tell them I have another one. Sure. Mom's a word. So Why Owen you gives you his mom? rations. So <laughs> Owen gives you his rations and we get the rock. And a rope. And a rope. Um, I'm not very good at this, but 
I still want to try anyways. I would have tried making an impression, but I kind of punched him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, you've already made an impression. Punch I know. Cheek. The the the. <laughs> Roman diplomacy up. goes out the window when you roll an attack. But I was trying to sense motive on him, see if he's telling the truth or not. Okay, yeah, definitely. Go ahead and do that sense motive. Ah, oh. uh, I can't roll it because we don't have icon. Oh, what icon? Yeah. The uh, the basic action Marcos really gets upset if there's not a token for you to have selected. And let's pop him back down too, so if you need him. Shot. No, I'm here. Perhaps. Sorry, I was writing down a note and was mumbling to myself, so I muted myself. <laughs> All right. We... Everyone was quiet, so it was like um, maybe less internet or something. Uh, yeah, that does happen on occasion. Um, but uh, uh, this individual does seem uh, greatly influenced by the uh, prospect of having food. Uh, it doesn't seem to be that um, anything they are doing is malicious at this point. Receptive. Okay, I just figured it's a rock and rocks don't float, so he's gotta be full of shit somehow, but I, I guess not. <laughs> it's a magic rock, man. Come on, get it with the program. Like rock. <laughs> if only we had a wizard. I, I'm a wizard. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess that's something Valen would do. Um, as he's offering this rock, uh, Valen turns to Nathan and is like, "Can you can you do the magic thing again and see if his rock's got magic in it, or if he's gonna give us a just a stone?" Yeah, I'll I'll do that. I, I'm kind of wondering from like a nature perspective, does this rock just look like a rock? That's it. That's sad. <laughs> From a nature perspective, this looks like a rock. It look like a rock. Okay. Yeah. Dear God, it's marble. Would you uh, be willing to demonstrate the rock's properties to us? Uh, so do oh, I roll Arcana or does just detect magic work? Um, I mean, you can roll detect magic, but you're going to detect magic in the area. Uh, you have been detecting magic in the area for quite a while. Okay, so I guess I'll try and use Arcana to s suss out whether this is legit a weird thing that does what he's saying it does, or if he's, like, pulling our leg. Yep, fair enough. Go ahead and roll that blindly, please. Um, you've not really heard of anything like this before. I haven't heard anything Why? about this before. I was wondering, because I'm an Earth Fire uh, kinetic. Mm. Uh, I, I'd allow a nature roll on that one from you. Do you want me to click the recall knowledge, or do you want me to click nature? Um, Go ahead and do, just do a secret nature. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. Okay. Um, well, you are aware that there are some rocks that do actually float. Um, who who took the rock, by the way? I don't think we we, we have yet. I think he's still offering it to us, and we're okay, trying to figure kinda, out if it's magical or not. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of peering over it in its outstretched hand. Um. I yes. figure if we're getting scammed by the forest man. I'll uh, take the forest man's rock. I, because, I mean, looking at it, it does look um, quite porous. Almost like... Um, 
coral. Yeah, like a coral almost. Um, and when you uh, pick it up out of his hand, it feels extremely light, uh, almost as if um, it's hollow. All right, well, let's take the rock and go find us a stream. All right, give him his food and rope. Yep, I pull him out and hand him over to him. Excellent. Oh, this will keep me happy and hungry for a while. Yeah, no problem. Again, sorry for uh, starting things off on the wrong foot there. You know, we just uh, figure if somebody sets traps out here, they're probably trying to catch people. Um, Should have thought about it a little bit more. You know, three foot hole, not, not going to trap very many people, but... You know, you go with what you can. <laughs> nope, just trying to catch a boar. Makes sense. Or a tiger. Something to eat. Well, we appreciate your help, John. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, watch out for boars and tigers. Uh, pretty mean. We'll eat them. It's so, fine. So uh, before you go, do you have any idea where the nearest, like, stream or river is? Oh, crap. I was supposed to look for that. He climbs back up the tree. Looks around. Well, with how dark it is, kind of hard to tell. Um, I did see a purple glow. Sometimes the rivers glow colors. Um, you've been here two weeks. You might have known this. Um, yeah, there's a purple glow off in that direction. As he points in a direction that it's kind of hard to see because it's dark. And uh, he's dark skinned and in the tree. But uh, you guys get a direction. <laughs> okay. Towards a purple. Thanks, John. Yellow. All right. John, you need help with anything before we head out? <laughs> nope. I'm going to sleep up here tonight. Oh, you sleep well there, buddy. Have fun. Don't choke on the rash tins. And then Valen says under his breath, God forbid, make me happy. And uh, he starts walking off in that direction. Watch out for Harvard guys. They like to punch people. Yeah. Watch out for spiders. Spiders. Oh. Watch out for mushrooms. Yeah. No, those taste good. Well, watch out for a brain aneurysm. They can come at any time. You never know when. All right, this game's going on long enough. <laughs> Get out of here. Let me go to sleep. All right. Watch Bye. Out. Are we going treats. to make camp or are we going to roll? Yeah, Balan was going to suggest like we walk a little bit ways towards this alleged purple light, which is probably the sun reflecting off the water. So there's no reason to do it in the dark in the first place. And then just once we're sufficiently away from John, Balan was going to suggest we make, make camp. Okay. So, Owen, did you give all of your rations to him? I, I gave him one of my last remaining rations, so I have one ration. <laughs> and I gave him my only rope. All right. Well, I've got a spare rope you can have, but the rations... Opens inventory. Um... <laughs> I've got enough for both of us, but just for one week, so. Sounds good, buddy. Yay. I don't and need much. I will transfer that over to the party stash for you. Once I hit the right bucket button. I mean... <laughs> I'm pretty good at hunting down food and stuff in the <laughs> forest. I could probably find something to eat. Hey, sounds good to me. <clears throat> okay, it's uh, it's in the party oh, stash. Wow. If you want to take it out of there, Owen. Awesome, thanks. Oh, wait, I can't add that to the... Uh... Whoops. Do it like this, then. There. Did that in the weirdest way possible, but hey, it works. Right. <laughs> so, 
Mr. DM, um, I do got assurance with the survival skill from my background. Ah. Uh, which means I would get a 15 automatically to subsist. But if this is a extreme or strange environment, as it puts it in the the guide, then it might be different and I might need to roll. Yeah, uh, this is definitely a strange and unusual environment, as cool. it is um, heavily magically influenced. Um, I'd also like to um, make a roll to try and subsist. Okay, go for it. Let's find the button. Subsist, survival. Yep. So... I do need to know if that is a failure or not. Uh, it would be a failure. Cool. Um, there you go. Okay. Do you have to be trained in survival to attempt to subsist? I believe so, yes. I uh, know you don't, actually. Subsist can be used trained or not. Oh, well, I'm wrong. Well, in that case, <laughs> I fail. <laughs> my glorious feet will see us true don't worry guys unfortunately um, there's five of us actually no that's perfect never mind we're great <laughs> oh there's six of us isn't there yeah, mm -hmm. six and oh wait there is six of us never mind we're not great uh, someone's going to be eating their rations because I can only uh, no, forage uh, for five I'll eat a ration I mean... Well, it I was can... <laughs> your subsist was a failure. Yes, but I have the forger feat, which if I ever roll a result worse than a success, I get a success. Oh, I'm forging as well. I don't know why, but that first line just well, did not read way. like that for, for some reason. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you saying it and then me rereading it. Yep. Okay. Cool. So success. Um, so. Uh, you're able to take care of yourself and four others, so you're able to take care of everybody, so nobody has to use rations tonight. And I need to fix your token, because it always does that. There we go. I need to fix your prototype. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, Thank you. Yeah. So, Valen is able to provide food for everybody alongside with Ko, who passed uh, their survival check. Uh, thankfully, because William uh, critically failed and was about to bring back a uh, poisonous mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that was not going to feel good. So... Thanks for the grab guys. Yeah, of well, Alan, you, he um... just he just vanishes from the uh, the camp for a little bit, and he then he comes back like probably like an hour or three later, dragging a animal carcass behind him, whatever that may be. <laughs> I'll show up with the mushrooms and berries and the apples or something. You guys can tell Valen killed it very cleanly with his great sword by uh, chopping it in the back, <laughs> very, very brutally. <laughs> uh, with that, you guys are able to uh, go ahead and get your rest for the night. Uh, you have completed three days now of the week. Let me advance my time a little bit. Uh, if you guys would go ahead and do the uh, rest for the night on your character sheets, the little bed there. Uh, you do not need to consume a ration. One, well, one of us is right. Nope, none nope. of you. Because both of you passed. Yeah, Valen took care of <laughs> five individuals, and Co took care of the last. Um, Man, we're never gonna have to worry about food unless, like, we're in the plane of fire or something. Actually, <laughs> we'd probably be okay there. 
Yeah, Co. <laughs> I true. know that place. Um, You're tuned to that place. But uh, as you guys are resting through the night, getting ready for the morning, a storm uh, seems to roll in, covering up the two moons, Malola and Delara, and you begin to see the crackling of thunder, or crackling, yeah, crackling of, uh, I don't know. The lightning and thunder start lighting up this night sky or the early morning. Though it too is odd as it rips across the sky in its multitude of colors. Greens, yellows, pinks, and purples. Has this um, occurred since me and Owen have been in the forest? Um... Not as close as this is, but yes, you have seen the lightning of color. All right. Wonder, damn, damn real. Well, um, while, do we dress through it? Oh, never mind. I was gonna say, while you might be questioning if that is real or not, Co. The rain that starts pouring is definitely real. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a little wet. Oh, it's About not the just a little. Shower. <laughs> Seeing the lightning, I said, "Man, I hope John's okay. He slept up oh, in a yeah. tree. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the one that's about to drown in a flood." As Valen rolls out of bed and very hastily is slapping on his armor. Yeah, I'm like, you're wearing metal armor in a late lightning storm too. <laughs> I mean, hey, look, it is what it is. I gotta keep it on. <laughs> I can't carry it. It has to be on my body. <laughs> oh, that's... Wait, what do you mean you can't Fans, carry you say? Um, It's too big to put in my backpack. <laughs> you can, like, run a rope through it and, like, make a little dummy thing to, just to carry it. Also, if I don't have it on, I'm fucked on AC, so we're just gonna put it on. <laughs> <laughs> I got no decks. Um, you risk, risk the lightning strike, that's fine. <laughs> well, Fortitude anything, save, take half damage. Yeah. Because he's touching the ground, it would just mean he's well grounded, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as I don't hold up my great sword and say, kill me, I'll probably be fine. Probably. Uh, turn my sword into a lightning rod. Um, don't worry. If you get struck by lightning, I'll definitely write about it. <laughs> that's joy. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if we can't find that purple light in the river and do yeah. it quickly. I was say, I want to scout ahead and see if I can find us a nice path there. Probably takes us like 10 minutes to break camp. At least takes takes me 10 minutes to get my armor on, so. <laughs> yep, does take you a hot minute. Uh, oh, yep, that's that. Okay. Uh, with that, you are able to make your way in the direction that you're given, uh, your glowing uh, horizon uh, isn't so glowy anymore because of all this dark clouds and rain and the uh, color colorful show the sky is putting on before. But we will uh, pick up there next week, or not next week, in two weeks. As we get ready for our uh, fun in the thunder. Glorious. Thunder yeah. fun. Heck yeah. Oh, Alrighty, good session. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, Butter and Cody, welcome to our campaign. Ooh. Heck yeah, man. Good good Hope fun, y'all. Nice Hope you guys there. enjoyed Valen. You know, kind of still ch chiseling away on the, you know, the tiny character details. But, you know, he's, he's there. Yeah, just one slug at a time, right? One He's slug at a time. All I'm robo. saying is, I could have charged with the great sword. Yeah, you could have. You could have. <laughs> and that 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 great sword has a D12, and if I, since I'm a fighter, if I crit, <laughs> that is bad. <laughs> I mean, we'd, I I... we'd still be lost in the woods. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Luckily, be fair, since, like if you since... did that, you would have fit right in because I, one of our very first well... outings. You know, 